Hello Internet! Welcome back to Let's Make a Flat Shader. It's been a while since I've worked on this project. It's been about a month now. So we're going to catch up quick and then I have an idea for how we can take this in a different direction. So right now this is this is where we left off. After, after two episodes we have a foreground color that we can modify like so and it kind of wraps around. I'm using this gradient you can see up there. Looks like that. So we can kind of draw like a cooldown thing or overlay or whatever. And then we also have a background color that we can modify and that does a cutoff and all of that. We can also change these masks so I can plug in like a circle if I want to make it look like that or however. Next, what I'm thinking we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to remove this mask. I think we can plug in some mathematical formulas here and then base that off of our UV coordinates that we've kind of, we kind of walked through those in previous videos, but I'll go briefly over them here. And then the idea is we can plug in those mathematical formulas and based on those, we can draw our image. And I think if, if we do this right, it should allow us to get like more precise than the resolution of our of our image because right now if we scroll in you can see there's some imperfections in our circle it looks kind of spotty around the sides so i think we can fix that at least i, I hope we can so the idea here we're going to start with the issue is each of these are probably going to require their own shader because we're going to have to plug in these mathematical formulas based on 2d coordinates so that's the downside of this approach, but the cool side is that we're able, or we should be able, to do all sorts of really cool stuff, maybe even run it through like some really cool, maybe we could bring in our fractal stuff and use that. But this is where we're going to start. I'm going to create a new flat procedural shader. Flat circle shader sure and i just am going to open this guy one sec forgot to open visual studio that's my bad all right so we're back here and we have our this is the shader we were using for that other image it takes a gradient and draws those foreground and background colors so what we can do is copy this and then we can go back to our other shader. I'm just literally gonna just copy and paste. And the only thing we have to do is give it a different name. We'll call it our flat circle. And so that's all we need to do. I had a bit of formatting from copy and pasting that needs to be fixed. So Visual Studio kind of tries to format things, but it kind of struggles with uh, the shader language like there's some weird stuff and it just kind of gets all all messed up but we'll leave that for another time so what we have here is we have exactly what we had in our previous one the only difference now is we want to take away this texture lookup we're not going to use that anymore what we are going to use is we're going to set that C because we're looking at the red component, the R component. And so we can just set this to a fixed number and it can actually be based off of the UV coordinates of our mask. So I haven't figured out a way. Um, I've tried something similar to this before, but I haven't figured out a way where we can get UV coordinates of the mesh without passing in an image. So we still, even though we aren't going to actually use the texture at all, we still need that as part of the material. And that's so we can do this UV coordinate lookup. Uh, so to catch up, if you don't aren't familiar with UV coordinates, it's going to be from zero to one and it's going to, well, we're going to have it repeating. So it's going to go zero to one and then like two is the same as one and so forth. It just loops over and over and over and over again. 
So if you want to like scale a texture, like if you apply it to a ground, it will just keep looping that same texture over the entire terrain. Which is kind of why it looks repeating in some games that don't handle the, that feature well. But what we're going to do is since it's from zero to one, and the radius or the distance from any point in a circle to its outer edge is just the radius, what we can do is we can solve for the radius from that point. And so how we're going to do that, is we're going to take the x and y coordinates of this mask, which is going to be our u and our v respectively. It doesn't really matter where we are, where it is, because we're centering it in this texture. Do we want to center it? We actually could. So what I'm thinking is we could actually have it not be centered. And that way, if you want to like offset it and do like a rounded corner, then you could just put it in the bottom left or something and have that corner be round. That's an option. We'll we'll look, we'll do the simple version first, and then we'll look into that. So how how we're gonna solve this is we I want a x coordinate which is going to be negative zero point five time or plus our input of the UV foreground mask dot u so this is going to be since our uv is are both going to be zero to one this is going to get us between negative 0.5 and 0.5 and so if we multiply this by two we should get between negative one and one i think that makes sense and then we can do that again for our y coordinate and switch this to v so now we have an x and a y coordinate in our fake space, which is going to be from yeah, negative one to one in all directions. Then what we can do is we have our foreground cutoff and our background cutoff. So what we want is we want this C to be the radius. And so that is going to be Oh, I should I should know this off the top of my head. Uh, we want it to be the square root of x times x plus y times y. So x squared plus y squared. Um, we could do like a power here, but I'm not going to. And this should result in our radius, assuming I'm remembering trigonometry correctly. I don't know why I'm questioning my trigonometry skills. It hasn't been that long. But anyway, we're going to pretend like this works. We've got our radius. And then I just need to switch this to clip our radius twice. Like that. And now how this would work is instead of what we were doing previously in this old shader, is we were going through here and we were clipping things if it, it was if it was below our cutoff range. Now we're doing that in the same way, but we're doing it for a radius. And now that I think about it, where it's probably going to be backwards because one, it, the values are going to grow as they go outside. But we're going to try it anyway. Ooh, didn't like that. Invalid character U. In okay. So it's saying there's an invalid character in our swizzle operator. So the swizzle operator is like a graphics thing. And so what that lets you do, what it is, is I can do X, Y, Z, uh, W, I believe that's the other one. Um, it, it, the reason it's called a swizzle operator is because that's valid. That's perfectly valid. But so is RGBA or ARGBA or RGB or x y w z or w w x y z or any of those you can plug in any of them and it will return it based on that that's why it's called the swizzle operator because you can do so much with it so even though we have just a, a vector we can take that and convert it into if we want to work with color we can call it rgba if we want to work with uh four dimensional objects we can call it uh, x y z w and you can you can make it work how you need 
and the shader language will figure that out for you. So let's, we can actually just use X and Y, I believe, not U and V. And now it's going to get mad at us because C is undefined. And that is fine because we can just change that to one. And so this alpha of one works because we have this clip up here, which is going to prevent it from drawing the pixel in the first place. So we'll still get opacity because we'll be clipping the entire pixel and just not drawing it at all. And so this won't be factored in. The only time this will be factored in is if we actually do draw the pixel and then we want it to be completely opaque, which is going to be a value of one. So our shaders compiling, that's good. I can find our material and switch it over to our flat circle. And it occurs to me now that I moved this into the wrong, I named it wrong. But I was right, it's backwards. But if I zoom way in and then move this, oops, move this guy over, gonna have to move it a bunch because here, let's do it this way. And then I'm going to change the cutoff point. What is going on? What have I done? Oh. <laughs> well, that explains a lot. So I moved it too far. I guess that makes sense because it's one wide and I moved it 0 0.75. So that's, that's too much. Anyway, we zoom way in. You'll see it worked. We don't, we aren't getting any of those classic uh, jagged edges that we would. Just to prove that it works, I'm going to switch back to our, where is it? Flat, simple, this guy. And I'm gonna plug in the inverse. So this should get us a similar look. You'll see this one's less precise, but it's a, it's a similar idea. We're just getting these, the jagged edges. The reason it isn't completely jagged here is because I have these textures set to have some filters on them. So they actually smooth themselves out. If you change these filters, like if I change it to a point filter, we'll get straight lines. I kind of like the bilinear filtering because, well, it makes this happen. And we get, when you're using like gradients and stuff, it kind of smooths things out, which is what we want to happen. We want this to be as unnoticeable as possible. So we can go back, yeah, apply. We can go back to our flat circle and we get this guy. Looks good. Only difference is now it doesn't really work because it's backwards. So we can go in here. I'm going to change this to be in the proper folder. We're going to call it the circle shader. Absolute circle. Sure. We'll call it the absolute circle. Why not? All right. So this is where we are. What we need to get where we need to get is we need to switch this. And then after that, we can move this origin, which is right here, this negative 0 0.5. Once we move that, then our shader should just work. So to flip this, all we have to do is change our clip to be one minus the radius minus the background cutoff. I'm thinking this may be wrong. We can just switch this. So it isn't the radius anymore, but it does work. And that's how we do that. So now we drag this background cutoff all the way to zero, we get this, we get a perfect a circle that goes all the way out to our end. And then we can change the foreground cutoff. So how this is working is if I do this as 0.1, that first 10th of the circle is going to be outlined. And if I increase this, then that increases the amount of outline. So that that there's that. 
And if we need to shrink the entire circle, we can change the background and it will just pull itself in. And this is going to affect the entire size, but it's not going to affect the foreground cutoff. So you need to shade, you need to affect both of these at the same time if you want to do that. So I think, I think that's that. The next thing is we want to be able to center this circle or move it about. So to do that, let's plug in a vector. That's not wrong. X. So I'm not going to use a vector here because I want to, I need to clamp this to the UV coordinates. Actually, I'm talking too fast, not thinking. I think we can already do that. Yeah. So if I change this like that, we get our corner. And that, that's all, all we need to do. And I can change this to be 0.5 as well. And we're done. There's our, there's our corner. And so the reason this works is because our offset is going to be what we're using. When we're getting those UV coordinates, these tiling and offsets are used in calculating that. And so by setting the X and Y tiling to be half of what they were, I'm enlarging it, embiggening. That's not a word. I'm making it bigger, um, the, the UV scale. So instead of every th single instance of this quad being zero to one, it's not doing that anymore. It's actually 0 0.5. And then what we did is we moved it so that it's now 0 0.5 to 1. And then when we plug those into our formula, we get this. So that's an easy way to solve this. We don't need to actually change our shader at all, which is frankly better. So I think that's, that's all I wanted to do here. Uh, I did want to talk a little bit about uh, what's going on with Emotable. So I've been, last week we did a lot with Emotable. It's a Windows, universal Windows platform app that I've been kind of live streaming and doing these uh, let's make videos. So right now I'm kind of putting that on hold, not because I'm gonna cancel it or anything. The, the issue I'm running into is my composition API is not, not working. So I'm talking to some people who know more about it than I do. And they're, they're looking into trying to fix it. So once that gets sorted out, we're going to jump back into that, into that, or there may be a few videos about other parts of that, but I don't, right now I'm, I, there's some issues that I'm running, working it through with that project. And so I want to kind of get those resolved because I, I don't think that it's going to be productive for either of us to try to do it here. So once those are done, we'll jump back to that project. But for now, we're going to play around with these. I think moving on with this idea, I think there's a lot we can do because what we have right now, this X and Y, all we have to do is change these three formulas. Actually, we only need to really change this radius guy. If we don't, we don't really need to call this the radius. We can just call this the amplitude or something. In the next video, I think what we can do is we can adjust, we can attach things like sine waves to our y values and move that along. And I think that'll actually get us some interesting results. I think we might even be able to like graph things if we need to, because all we have to do is change how we're. Once we get calculate this value, then we can just plug that into our formulas and everything else is done. So this one line is doing pretty much all of our work. We don't need to do anything else here. That's all done. And we can scale everything and it just works. So thanks for watching guys. Uh, hope you liked it. If you did, leave a like, uh, leave a comment. I'd, I'm kind of interested. I'm looking into picking up some, I've seen people posting on Reddit and stuff about some questions they have regarding various programming topics from dot products to other things, especially shaders. People seem to have a lot of questions about shaders. So I may, I may get into some of that stuff and may just start picking questions off of Reddit and stuff and, and solving those and seeing, seeing where that goes. But if there's something you, you are interested in or you want me to look into, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. So 
Until next time, see you guys.